dark and difficult times lie ahead. Soon, we must all face the choice between what is right and what is easy. How you doing, folks? Uh, this video is a bit of an educational video, if you like. Uh, somebody sent me a link to a document from the College of Policing which had some information in there that I really wasn't entirely sure about. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that don't know this as well. So I thought I would share this information with you. Now, back in 2012, I believe it was, Rowan Atkinson and some other comedians fronted a campaign called Reform Section 5, uh, where they fought to have the legislation, the public order legislation, changed to remove the word insulting. That was successful. And on the 1st of February 2014, the change was incorporated into Section 57 of the Crime and Courts Act 2013. Now, around the same time, a document was drawn up by the College of Policing to help police officers understand the change. But there's some bits in there as well which aren't changed, but it's stuff that we wouldn't know about as members of the public, so to speak. So that's what I'm gonna share with you, just to give you a little bit of advice when it comes to public order offences. Now, this is the document here, College of Policing Guidance on the Amendments to Section 5.1 and 6.4 of the Public Order Act 1986. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of this. This is 15 pages long. I don't need to go through all of this. I have downloaded this, so I've got a copy, but I will link to this document in the description. Uh, I do know after I linked to a document on the .gov.uk website, for some reason, they not to do with this, but to do with the um, enforcement officers when the lady was made to cry in the in the graveyard, if you remember that video. In fact, I'm going to pop a link to that up here so you can watch that again. If you Or if you haven't seen it already, you can go and watch that. <coughs> Excuse me. But that link that I put through to the .gov.uk website, they changed it. They changed the link. Uh, and it was after it was less than 24 hours after I had linked to it the link got changed and now I can't find the document so the link is now dead um, so I'm hoping they're not going to do that with this document so I've downloaded this so if this does disappear or the link gets changed then what I'll do is I'll upload it to a Dropbox or something similar and put the link to that in the description so that you can download this yourself and check it uh, basically, the, the main parts here is, this is a Section 57 of the Crime and Courts Act 2015, will amend Section 5.1 and 6.4. The purpose of this guidance is to present the amended wording, uh, provide the context of the amendment, highlight legal and operational practice implications. So, We don't need to worry about that bit. We don't need to worry about that bit. Again, please feel free to download this and have a look at it yourself. But the mo most important parts for me was the Public Order Act 1986, Section 4.3 of this document that states Section 6.1 of the Human Rights Act 1998 states that it is unlawful for a public authority to act in a way which is incompatible with a convention right. Officers must therefore ensure they do not apply Section 5 of the Public Order Act 1986 in a way which is incompatible with the provisions of the European Convention of Human Rights, in particular Article 10, which relates to the freedom of expression, noting that Article 10 is a qualified right. When an officer considers using Section 5 as an offence, they will first have to assess whether the offence is being committed under the abusive or threatening limbs. Now, I think that's important to note that if you're arrested, they can't just say we're arresting you for Section 5 public order. 
the offence is either abusive or threatening, or in some cases both. But they should, in my opinion, they should be telling you which one they believe it is. To just say we're arresting you for public order offence, well, that doesn't mean really that they've got anything on you. Because they're not giving you a specific offence that you have committed. So I personally, from now on, if I get asked or if I get told or if I get warned with a public order offence, I'm going to turn around and say, is that under the abusive or is that under the threatening limb? Because if it's under neither, then I'll see you later. I think that's important to note. And also they have to assess the European Convention of Human Rights, Article 10, whether or not they're restricting our freedom of expression. It also goes on to say in 4.3.3 that although there is no legal requirement to do so, officers should consider giving a warning prior to making an arrest for Section 5 offences. Making an arrest without first giving warning may subsequently be found to having to have constituted a disproportionate restriction on the person's right of freedom of expression. Now, I know there's a lot of police officers that do give warnings. They might only give one, but ultimately they don't have to give 10. Do you know what I mean? They, at the end of the day, it's the same as if somebody's coming towards you to attack you, you give them one warning not to, and then after that, you're perfectly within your right to use reasonable force against them. Well, the police really should only have to give you one warning. Although from this, it says there's no requirement for them to give you any. If you're in a situation and you are arrested under, public, uh, under Section 5 of the Public Order Act and you're not given a warning, I would certainly consider bringing that up. You didn't, you know... I was expressing myself and you've restricted me from expressing myself with, you know, had you given me a warning, I could then have um, thought about what I was saying if, if it was indeed being threatening or abusive and then changed what I was saying. But the simple fact is, if they don't give you a warning, then there is a chance that you could possibly um, come back at them. Your defence could be that they didn't give you... Um, a warning, therefore, it was a disproportionate restriction on your freedom of expression. Again, I'm not saying that that's going to work, uh, you know, all the time or even at all. But it is there as a potential defence. So, obviously, sec right, I'm, you know, if you, if you don't stop that, I'm arresting you for Section 5 of the Public Order Act. Okay, Constable, so is that under the abusive or the threatening limb? Because I'm not abusing anybody. I'm not threatening any, anybody. See what I mean? That's a, You know, without knowing that, that's actually a good bit of information to have. And also, uh, the the restrictions on, on the person's right to expression. Again, a human right is a qualified right. It means we have that right. There are some um, instances where that can be restricted. Again, if you're being abusive or threatening... But if you're talking out loud and you're not talking to somebody specifically abusing them or threatening them, then I would like to think that a good solicitor would be able to, you know, put a very good argument in for you on that case. Also, 4.34 or 4.3.4. It is also important to note that Section 4A of the Public Order Act 1986 will retain the insulting limb. So, a person is guilty of an offence if, with intent, you see how that's highlighted, that is made in bold to make people understand that there has to be intent to cause a person harassment, alarm or distress. He uses threatening, abusive or insulting words or behaviour in a disorderly behaviour or displays any writing sign or other visible representation which is threatening, abusive or insulting, thereby causing that or another person harassment, alarm or distress with intent. Again, something that we wouldn't normally think about. Police officer says, police constable, police staff says, 
stop it because you're breaching, you know, that's a Section 5 Public Order Act. Please explain how, officer. Always remain calm. Please explain how, officer. Constable. You know, um, am I being threatening? Am I being, in, uh, you know, abusive? You know, unless you are, then obviously if you are doing that, then you have to put your hands up and take the take the heat for it. But if you're not, which in a lot of cases, people aren't actually doing that, but because they don't know that there has to be the abusive or the threatening limb, or they don't know under Section 5, or they don't know under Section 4A there has to be intent, people just go along with it. You go to the police station, you say you agree to everything and say, yes, I did it. And they go, sweet, we've got a, you know, we've got a confession, basically. Now we can slap him with a fine bit of money in our pockets. Lovely jubbly. Do you know what I mean? So this is stuff that people really need to know and understand. Now, I don't know if there is a, a more recent version of this document. I've not been able to find one. I've been searching. I've not yet found one. If anybody else can find one, please let me know in the comments. Um, but at the moment, this one seems to be the one that's in force this document is the is the the guidelines if you like the um excuse me itchy eyeball <laughs> seems to be the guidelines for you know the public order act in that respect um or one last thing as well which i want to point out which i found very interesting 4.3.6 it should also be stressed that while it is clear that a police officer may be caused harassment, alarm or distress, they are usually expected to display a greater degree of fortitude than members of the public. For an officer to be caused harassment, alarm or distress, the conduct complained of must go beyond that which he or she would normally or regularly come across in the ordinary course of police duties that because remember i got arrested in february uh, uh, sec, uh section 50 the police reform act okay failing to give my details but section 50 can only be used if they believe a public order offense has been committed okay i didn't commit public order offense i didn't cause anybody alarm and distress there was nobody there apart from police officers and the police officers said that they were scared of me being on a public pavement in full view of their CCTV cameras, in full view of them coming in and out in their police cars, you know, with a camera on a tripod. And they were scared. Maybe a member of the public might be, you know, curious, maybe even alarmed if I was set up on their driveway pointing down their driveway to the back of their house. But this was a business. This was police officers who are under scrutiny all the time. Not enough, you know, but they are under scrutiny and, and are, are videoed more than ever before. And hopefully that will become more and more prevalent throughout members of the public filming the police and their, and their actions. But it quite, clearly states that for an officer to be caused harassment, alarm or distress, the conduct must go beyond that which he or she would regularly come across in the ordinary course of police duties. That would mean swearing at a police constable. They get that normally, okay? <laughs> Call him on a pig, they get that. Call him on a twat, they get that. Tell him on a fuck off, they get that. That's something that they normally have to go through, okay? It's not normal for a normal member of the public, I suppose, but, you know, they they get it a lot. And so that would, therefore, depending on how serious the abuse was, because, you, you know, you can go too far, but depending on, you know, but depending on that, there is little reason why a police officer, police constable, I keep... I keep saying officer, why a police constable uh, should be able to do you for public order offence against them. That is very important for photographers, for, you know, street journalists, street photographers, etc. 
And I wanted to share that with you because that information I've just given you, I think is very important uh, in order to keep you safe. And if you are arrested for a public order offence, then this could be a bit of a golden key, if you like, to, uh, to your defence and your argument. So I know this is a bit of a boring educational video, but I hope that this has been of some use to you. Bookmark this video, stick it in your favourites. Do you know what I mean? Add, add this to your playlists if you want to, so you can come back to it. But remember, if you're stuck under a, under a public order act, that under section five, there has to be an abusive element or a threatening element. Okay. Under section four A, there has to be intent. And if a police officer tries to bullshit you with you causing him alarm, harassment and distress, again, depending on how serious you are with your language, shall we say, um, you may well be able to uh, pull up DPP versus Aurum and, uh, you know, and use that as a defence as well. So anyway, I do apologise about Daisy over there snoring her head off yet again, lazy bitch. Uh, it's because we've been out for a run today. Well, she's been out for a run. Um, I, I didn't run, but there we go. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, share the video and uh, come back tomorrow for another video. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.